Hello, and welcome to Vivork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is part 24 in a 10-part video series in which we're exploring how to automate using View Realize Orchestrator. And the subject of this particular video is sort of a continuation of video number 23. In video number 23, we took a look at how to use the for each schema element to call another workflow repeatedly. And one of the key concepts we learned in that video was the concept of something called an iterator. When you use the for each schema element, the workflow that you call has one or more input parameters, and we need to specify at least one of them to be the iterator variable. The iterator variable is simply the input parameter for the workflow that we're calling. It's the input parameter whose value we want to change each time the for each calls the other workflow. In the previous video, I showed you how to set up a for each schema element to call a workflow that has just a single input parameter. Therefore, we could only have a single iterator. But in this example, I'm going to show you how to work with a more complicated workflow that has multiple input parameters and how to set up the for each so that instead of just changing one of the input parameters each time for each calls the other workflow, it's going to change multiple. Sound exciting? Well, let's go see what this looks like. So as you can see here, I've gone into the lab environment and I'm going to create a new workflow. Let's see here, let's create a new workflow called, hang on, my mouse is acting a little squirrely here. There we go. I'm gonna create a new workflow called uh, multiple iterate, iterators. And I'll type a description later on. I just wanna jump straight to it here. So you'll recall back in video number nine, I believe it was, we called from a workflow, we called another workflow called Create Simple Virtual Machine. If you don't remember that, you might want to go back and look at video number nine. In that case, we called Create Simple Virtual Machine once. But what if you wanted to create 10 virtual machines or 20 virtual machines or so forth? Well, we can do that by calling the same workflow, Create Simple Virtual Machine, but instead of using workflow element to call it, we're going to use for each element. So let's drag a for each element in. We'll drop it. Let's try that again. My aim is off. We'll tell it which workflow we want to call. Create simple virtual machine is the workflow. And once again, we see the setup wizard. So I'll start this setup wizard. And as you'll recall from the previous video, these uh, little circular arrows, when they're black, indicates that you want a, a, a uh, input parameter of the workflow we're calling to be an iterator. Well, let's, let's turn those all off right now. So just clicking through these, turning them all gray, and now I have no iterators, which is not good. I need to have at least one iterator variable. Well, looking at the different variables that we have here, VM name, that's, that's something that we need to change each time before each loop calls create simple virtual machine. So we definitely want that to be an iterator. And I like to make the names plural, whereas uh, originally it's called VM name. Since this is gonna be an array of VMs names, uh, I just changed the name of the variable there. And we could just go with this as it is. Well, actually we, we, we still need to do the usual things we do. So for instance, uh, I'll turn all these other variables into attributes and I should set their values. I'll do that later on. But if you imagine I'd set all these other values, I could then run this workflow. And when the workflow ran, the user would be asked to supply one input parameter in which they would supply a list of names that they want their new virtual machines to be called. If that user supplied three names, then this workflow would create three virtual machines. If they supplied a list of 100 virtual machine names, then those names would show up. Uh, it, w when this workflow ran, it would create virtual machines with machines named the way the user specified. So that's all straightforward enough, but we don't have to limit ourselves to just a single iterator variable. For instance, maybe what we want to do is have each time the for each calls create simple virtual machine, not only do we want it to change the name, maybe we want it to change something else such as the memory size. That way, in fact, we'll, we'll give the user the ability to set the memory size by turning this into an input parameter. 
So by having two input parameters, one that allows the user to control the name of the VMs and another input parameter that allows them to affect the size. Whoops, it looks like I did disize instead. My aim's off. Uh, anyways, we could do it for both if we want. There we go. We'll turn them both into to um, turn them both into input parameters, make them both iterators. You can do this with as many of these input parameters as you want. So maybe I want them, the user to be able to change the name and the size of the disk and the memory size, but no, don't let them change the number of VM or virtual CPUs. Instead, we'll hard code that. You only get one virtual CPU. And other things I might want to hard code, such as disk thin provisioning. Yes, I always want thin provisioning turned on. But by setting up one or more input parameters as iterators and in this case, I've given the user the ability to control what their values are going to be, but I could just as easily set them up as attributes and I, the programmer, would be in control. But this is all it takes to set up your workflow, aside from the, I still need to assign these values, but this is all I need to do to set up this for each workflow call to call the workflow multiple times and change various things about the, the information that's being passed into the workflow each time. We'll have a different name, a different a disk size, a different amount of memory each time the user, um, for, for each of the, the, the VMs that the user specifies when they create their virtual machine. Now down below, we've got this uh, strangely named variable here. Um, the thing that you get out of this workflow when you call create simple virtual machine is a VM. In fact, it's, it's the new VM that you created. But you might be thinking to yourself, if I'm using an iterator, different VM names each time, I don't want to get back just a single virtual machine. It'd be nice if I got back an array of the VMs that got created. Well, conceptually, you could just click on the circular, the circular arrow, which doesn't show up here, but I'll show you a trick. But conceptually, if you clicked the non-existent button here to say, I want this to be an iterator, we could have an array of new VMs one for each of the VMs that the user specified, which would be very, 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 very cool. But again, the setup wizard for some reason doesn't allow you to do that. But let me click the promote button here. Uh, I mentioned before that you can work with iterators by going to the end tab. So if I want to change which of these variables is an end tab, I can do so. Um, I can click these buttons here to change something into an iterator or, or make it not an iterator. But for our purposes right now. I want to go over to the out tab, where as you can see, I can pick, it's automatically done so for me, but I can automatically pick of the multiple output parameters that this workflow may have had, I can pick which, which output parameters I want to turn into iterator variables. So let's see here, I've got everything set up the way I want. Let me just look at visual binding. Okay, so I've got these three input parameters. The user is going to set those values and I'm going to get an array of new virtual machine objects. That's great, but I still have all these attributes whose values I haven't set. So let me close the setup wizard and I'm going to go over to the general tab and I'm going to just quickly go through and set uh, all these values for these attributes to reasonable um, values. Uh, you've seen me do this before back in video number nine, so I don't think you really want to watch me do it again. So I'm going to go ahead and go through this, but I'll speed up the video so you don't have to watch this whole thing. Okay, so I need uh, to specify which guest OS. Why don't we go old school and we'll say DOS. So DOS guest operating system. And then uh, let's go to, we already hard-coded number of CPUs. What else do we need here? Uh, we already hard-coded disk and provisioning. Uh, let's set up the data store. So for the data store, whoops, I didn't mean to click there. That wouldn't even change the name of the data store variable. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to click here on, the, on not set. So I'm going to pick a data store by browsing through the tree. Let's see, data stores. There's data stores. I'll just pick this data store. Uh, for the network, oops, click the wrong thing again. I'm going to click on not set. Let's go pick a network. Let's see, network. I only have one network, so I'll select it. What else do I need? I need the host that the VM's gonna run on. Let's see, I'll pick my first host. Uh, what else do I need? I need the resource pool that the VM's gonna run in. Again, I'll just browse and select that. So on the first host, there's a resource, hidden resource pool called resources. And one last thing I need, I need to specify the VM folder where the VM's gonna land. So let's do that. Uh, we'll just use the default in VM folder called VM. All right, welcome back everyone from the speeded up video. As you can see, I've set up all my attributes. I've set up my for each schema element and done everything. Uh, let me click save here. I'm gonna validate my workflow. Looks like everything's good here. So since this is all set up, I should now be able to run this workflow. 
Remember, my workflow has uh, specified that the user needs to provide three different input parameters. They need to specify the name of the virtual machine, but in this case, this is not going to be just a single virtual machine. This needs to be an array of virtual machine names. So I'll click Not Set, and just for fun and giggles, I'll call the first VM VM1, insert. The next one I'll call VM2, and the last one I'll call VM3. And then I'll set them up with different size, whoops, forgot to click accept. I need to specify for each of those the amount of disk space I want allocated. So why don't we say 10 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes, and 30 gigabytes, which is kind of amusing given that this is supposed to be a DOS operating system. I don't know what DOS is going to do with drives that big, but we're not actually going to power on the VM, so I'm not really worried about it. I'm not even going to install DOS into them. Let's see, uh, virtual machine memory size, um, let's see here. So let's uh, do one virtual machine will be 128 megabytes. The next one will be 256 megabytes. And the third one will be 200, excuse me, 512 megabytes. Massive amounts of memory for DOS. So now if I run this workflow, I should see it going through this loop multiple times, creating multiple machines. Uh, depending upon the nature of the workflow that I'm calling, I may or may not see, um, I may or may not see logging messages as it creates each one. But as you can see here, unexpectedly, I've actually encountered a little problem. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, uh, not quite certain how I got into this situation. I thought I said thin provision disks, so somehow I lost my uh, thin provision disk. I thought I had said, yes, tell you what, why don't we try this one more time? Uh, I'm going to edit the workflow ever so briefly. Disk thin provision needs to say yes. Not, again, not quite certain how I lost that. We'll run the workflow again. Uh, we'll change the names of the VMs just slightly, which is uh, actually a good thing that I had this problem so that I don't... Uh, encountering the same problem. I'm going to slightly change the names of these VMs. Uh, but again, I say it's good that I just ran into that problem because you can see how you can uh, change the contents of your wizard. If you hadn't, excuse me, change the contents of your array, the array wizard allows you to delete entries, allows you to move them up and down. But I've got three new names for VMs now. If I hit accept, I'll go with the same values for everything else. But let's try that again. I'm going to click submit. Run the workflow again. Okay, so the workflow is running again. Uh, if it's a nice workflow, it'll show me, hey, it looks like uh, each time it's creating a VM, I can see, a, I don't see a whole lot of information coming out of Create Simple Virtual Machine, but I can see some indication that it is succeeding and progressing forwards. So I'll tell you what, it looks like this all worked. Why don't we go switch over to the vCenter server, specifically we'll, we'll use the web client or the HTML5 client, and let's go see if those VMs got created. Okay, it took me a few moments to start up the, the vSphere web client. I didn't have it already running, but here it is running. And as you can see in the vSphere web client, I have three new virtual machines called VM0, VM1, and excuse me, 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0, 03. Those are the three VMs that we just created. And there's the error message from my boo boo before. I'm gonna have to go <laughs> clear up that, that, that problem, but you don't need to watch that in this video. What you do need to do, however, let me switch back over to the VRO client is, I, I would like to point out one more thing. Notice that when you call this for each, if we have an iterator output parameter, such as new virtual machine, notice that instead of getting back just one VC colon virtual machine, I have a whole array of VC colon virtual machines, which I can work with in the next schema element. I can iterate through those VMs and do whatever I want with them. But the key thing that I've shown you here in this video is how to cr use the for each schema element with multiple iterators. Okay, that's it for this video. I'll see you in future videos. Thanks, everyone.